welcome to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. Hear and learn through the success of others how to build the life and business you deserve. Learn to overcome failure, what it means to seek out growth, and how to become the best possible version of yourself. And now, here's your host, coach, entrepreneur, husband and father, and author of the number one best-selling book, Survive, Scale, Soar, Jeremy Williams. And welcome back to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy. And just a quick reminder that this show comes in two formats. There's real talks, just me and the mic talking about what's happening in our world and how that'll impact your business and success talks where I get to interview some of the people at the top of their industry and they share with you, the audience, what has made them successful. And today is a success talk and I am excited to have on the show, Amber Wagner. She is a veteran, first of all, a wife of three amazing kids, and she is the owner of Vanity Salon in the Woodlands, Texas. Amber, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this conversation today. And, you know, I, I coach a lot of real estate agents, and a lot of people don't know that I also work with small business owners, and I get to work with you. And I think it's just some really great insight into an industry that what's, what's incredible is there's a lot of similarities with business owners, no matter what business that they're in, um, that they're dealing with. And I think this is going to help a lot of people today. So Amber, let's jump right in. Share with the audience your journey to um, building and owning Vanity Salon. Well, I was a hairdresser for about 18 years when I opened Vanity, I was at a place where I had worked for the big companies. I'd worked for myself in a small suite and I was just ready for my next step. And this salon space came available and I just jumped on it. And so you've been doing hair for a long time. So, you know, a lot of people may see you've, you've had Vanity for a shorter period of time, but what they don't realize is all the work that you've put in over the years. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lots of education, lots of time behind the chair. Um, lots of moves that I've done and I've rebuilt my clientele several times. I've had my three kids. Um, so, yes, I've been in the industry for a very long time. Yeah, I love that because a lot of people just kind of see what's above the surface with the business. They're like, oh, cool. She's got a salon and right. they don't realize all the work or the other things that are happening in life, you know, having kids and, and For sure. making the moves, the education, the, the pain, all the different stuff that goes into what's, what's really awesome. And that's your business. What gets you excited when you wake up every day to go to your business? I would say the community that I've, or that we have built here at Vanity um, with the other stylists and also the education, bringing in new stylists and just helping them learn the industry, helping them learn how to do hair because when they're in school, they don't really get that as much. They just get the book work to pass their tests and then they're kind of just thrown to the wolves. So it is really exciting for me to bring a new stylist in and kind of teach them and mentor them and be there for them. I love that. And I, and I want to hit on something with the audience that if, especially those who are thinking about going into a certain uh, industry or field uh, that requires licensing, um, you hit on something there that I think is really important when you're going through that process of getting a license, uh, you're really just kind of getting the head knowledge. Yeah. Right. You just shared that it's a lot different once you get into the industry and you need to be with great people like you that can train a mentor. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Awesome. What do you think is the biggest challenge that you face? Um, owning my business or starting my business. I feel like my biggest challenge is delegating. I actually have two. I feel like one's delegating and the other one is time management and just trying to make sure that everything gets done, but also realizing that I can ask for help from, you know, employees or hire out help if I need to. And I just, that has been the hardest part of owning a business for me. So you did, you did hit on it there. And I, I do want to ask the question now is what, what's the, what was the hardest thing for you when starting the business? Um, 
delegating again, just, you know, me and my husband came in here and redid this entire salon in one month. Um, I think the only things we actually didn't do ourselves were the plumbing and the electricity, obviously we're not plumbers or electricians. So, um, but I do feel like I could have delegated some of that out and it would have been a lot less stressful. Yeah, that leverage, it, leverage is huge. You know, when mm -hmm. we're sitting there thinking that, well, we can just do this all on our own or we'll do it better. Right. Um, you know, sometimes that, that brings to light that, well, you know, there are other people out there that might not do it 100% like we would, but if they even do 70%, um, it could make a huge difference in, in right. how fast we can grow. Well, and I just, I'm really particular about the way I wanted things done. And, you know, it's just, that is one thing I wish I would have kind of take a, took a step back and allowed myself to have some help because it was a very stressful month. So do you think that, that being particular, do you think that's because of the brand that you want people to come in and experience? You want it to be in a certain way that it reflects you and the business and the experience they should get? Yes, I do. Awesome. Go, go a little deeper on that. Like, when somebody walks in, what, what do you want them to feel when they walk through your doors? I want them to feel welcome, first of all. I want them to feel like they're walking into a place where everybody knows their name, right? If you're a client here, I want people to stop what they're doing. And when you walk in, say, hey, how are you? Who are you here to see? Let me get them. You know, customer service is huge for me, and I wanted that. But I also wanted people just to see something like, artsy and not so cold and you know more bland I feel like I feel like for me colors I wanted a lot of color I wanted it to be kind of industrial but I still wanted it to be like warm you know yeah I love that to, to feel like they're welcomed to feel like it's a it's a comfort safe place to go to right yeah uh, where they could open up as well Yes. Uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, and you said where everybody knows your name. So younger, my younger audience probably they will not get this, but <laughs> and I'm not gonna sing it. The Cheers TV show. That's why they were so successful because it was a bar where everybody knew. Me. So I love that. What is what is a lesson you've learned since opening the business, and how have you applied that? I have. My gosh, I've learned so much opening in this business. I. I would not have ever called myself um, an entrepreneur, but I, I do now, obviously. But I, um, I feel just like my time management, making sure things get done. You know, I haven't always been strong in paperwork and I'm getting so much better and like just the outside, you know, it's, it's, I'm great at behind the chair. It's the in front of the chair that, you know, kind of catches me sometimes where I'm trying to keep up, but I think I'm doing a lot better and that's been a big challenge, but I'm, I'm doing better. And I see that with a lot of business owners. I coach a lot of real estate agents, obviously, and, and they could be really, really good at the sales part, but absolutely horrible at managing the behind the scenes, the administrative it's hard side to balance. of the business. It's really hard right. to balance, but you, know, you don't, you probably don't realize as many hats as you wear. Um, especially when you start out as a solopreneur and then as you, even as you grow, uh, you, you probably have identified, Hey, there's some skill sets I need to work on. And, um, yes. you know, it's a That's, constant growth. It's a little humbling at times, but it's good. It, and, and growth is good and it's necessary. So. So when you, when you started out and you initially opened up the salon, were you anticipating that these things were coming or is it something that it's like, okay. I've got to, I got to regroup and figure this out. I, I, I knew a little because I had rented my own like salon suite before and I felt fine, but it was when I got my people that work with me here, that was a transition for me. And I was a learning curve because I had to kind of, I didn't really realize all the things that went into that. Yeah, I think I think especially when you're building a team, right? You're exactly. you're now becoming a you're now having to start work on those those leadership skills that you might that not have is. had to before. Yes. Awesome, and you're building a team. Yes, I am. Good. Uh, 
somebody's thinking about becoming a stylist or they're thinking about opening a salon just like you have done, what's one piece of advice you'd give them? I would say, like we talked about before, um, finding a salon where you fit and where you have support and you have a mentor and someone that's willing to put their time into you and um, help you work your way up in this industry. I mean, you have to build your clientele. You have to have the support of other stylists. You know, it's helpful to be in a salon with busy stylists because a lot of the times we'll get overflow and be able to pass on to the newer stylists. And, you know, it's just nice for them to have that kind of a support system. Yeah, I have to agree with that. You know, I I think you've got to find the right fit, the right person um, to go learn from. And I think in those lessons that you learn there, you kind of shortcut your way to success instead of going through, you know, you've, you've gone through all the failures and learned the lessons through those failures and you could help shortcut somebody. And so I think we've got to go find who we want to be and go, go align with them. Well, and another thing is I, I think that a lot of stylists, our future stylists get scared to go out and get a job while they're in school. And I think that's so important to assist as soon as you're able to do, as soon as you hit those hours, get out there, find a salon and start just working in a salon. It's, it's a game changer as a stylist. Yeah. I think it goes back to, you know, they're getting all the head knowledge, but if they could get out in front of that and start getting some of that experience, it's going to put them in a lot better place when they, when they do have the ability to make a decision, whether it's to stay on with that salon or um, go start their own. I think that's really important. For sure. I know you've you've had probably several growth moments over the years in your business, and I know we've talked about some of the growth uh, that you're looking towards in the future. Share with the audience what is what is Vanity Salon? What's the next steps ahead? Salon wise, my goals are to expand. Obviously, um, I want to possibly expand as much as a opening my own beauty school within a salon. So um, that's going to be a huge growth. Um, I'm not sure on the time frame on that, but that's definitely a goal. I'd say five-year plan. Um, Also, I'm starting my own hair extension line and I'm trying to get that launched by next year. I just want to continue here in the woodlands, growing my team and um, keep doing hair behind the chair. I think that's great. You have that vision and, and both those things you mentioned, I know are not like overnight. Hey, I can start this tomorrow. It requires a lot of planning. It requires finances. Um, it requires timing. And so getting all those things in line, but I think it's really important that you do have that vision. I see a lot of business owners that are out there, and they're just kind of floating in the wind. You know, if growth comes, great. If it doesn't, uh, you're being very purposeful about that. Tell about the services that you offer at Vanity Salon. Well, we pretty much offer every hair service, um, extensions, cuts, colors, highlights, specialty colors like balayage, um, color correction. We offer Brazilian blowouts. We do... I've been doing so many perms, do perms. Um, We also have an esthetician here at the salon. She does facials. She does um, microdermabrasion. She has a lot of cool little gadgets in there that she works with. You know, you could even come in, pop in weekly for a shampoo and style out. So we offer pretty much everything. Can you, can you fix this back here for me? I've got this, oh, this yeah, bald I spot that's starting to show up. All right. That's, that's great that you have all those services. You know, there's a lot of places you'll go into that offer one or two different things, but it sounds like you've got almost, you're pretty close to a one-stop shop. And then with the new things that you're adding, um, mm-hmm. that's, that's going to be amazing for, for your clients. So somebody's Perfect. listening to this. Uh, they live in, the salon is in the Woodlands, uh, Texas. It's north of Houston, Montgomery County area. Somebody's listening to this and they want to book an appointment with Vanity Salon. How do they do that? Um, They can call the salon or they can check out our website. 
Uh, it's vanitysalontx.com. And there's a link on there that they can click and fill out what they're wanting and we'll get right with them or they can call. Great. And y'all do walk-ins too, I'm assuming. We do offer walk-ins, yes. Great. So if you want to book an appointment with Vanity Salon, um, either with Amber or one of her team members, visit vanitysalontxfortexas.com. Again, vanitysalontx.com. Amber, I really appreciate you being on the show today. Uh, there's Thank a lot you for of having lessons. me. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that you shared here that is going to help somebody out there. It doesn't matter the business that they're in. Um, I, you know, one of the things I, I heard and, you know, impacted me was the leverage portion. Like find those good people around you that can help you uh, grow important. to where you want to go. Yes. Awesome. Uh, well, Amber, thank you again for being on the show. And until next time, onward and upward. Thank you for listening to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. If you heard something that made a difference in your life today, share it with someone that might benefit and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Learn more about the host of this podcast and coaching services offered by Red Hawk Coaching by visiting www.redhawkcoaching.com.